This is Pastor Jerry Cannon. I want to thank you so much for joining us for worship today. We hope that this word inspires, informs, and most importantly, enlivens your life to be a faithful disciple. So sit back, relax, but most importantly, let's go to the word. Calling your attention to verses 39 and 40 of this text, familiar to some, maybe new to others, but I believe text that is loaded with the Holy Spirit. For the Bible says, some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. In verse 40, it says, I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. And with the aid of the Holy Spirit and your encouragement this morning, on this Palm Sunday, I want to lift up for our discussion today, our subject, trials before triumphs. Trials before triumphs. Let me give you the tweet for the week as we start the sermon. And here it is. Don't allow a God moment to be turned into a negative, tragic situation. Don't allow a God moment to be turned into a negative, tragic situation. Yesterday, Sister Doris, as I was reading the Charlotte Observer, I ran across an article written by Isaac Bailey. Isaac Bailey wrote an article entitled, South Carolina's Dawn Staley Shows Grace in Face of Unfair Questions. For the article highlighted, members of the University of South Carolina's women's basketball team under the direction of head coach Dawn Staley, honored by South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster and the legislative delegation from the State House on last Wednesday, April the 6th. Why were they at the State House? Well, because on Sunday, April the 3rd, the USC Gamecocks won the 2022 NCAA National Championship. And Dawn Staley, the coach, is said to have brought more honor and excellence to South Carolina than most people in recent memory. And after her latest historic achievement, she, she had to answer questions, y'all, about whether the University of South Carolina women's basketball team that she leads is patriotic. Th- that's right. She's the coach, Brother, Brother Nelson, where, where we're a team that, that, that won the National Collegiate Athletic Association Championship, but still she has to defend to raise the question if her team is patriotic or not. Isaac Bailey wrote in the article, y'all, in the Observer yesterday, you can read it, he says, I couldn't help but to think that here she is, fresh off of a second national title, being greeted by as conquering heroes of the General Assembly, but still having to deal with the criticism of being unpatriotic. Bailey wrote that that they deserve to be recognized. They deserve to be applauded. They they earned it. But however, he says, I'm saddened that, that, that in this case, a black woman and her predominantly black team is often, they, that, that ain't enough. He, he says, think about it. Days before the, the Gamecocks uh, defeated the University of Connecticut to win the national championship, uh, uh, the Business uh, Insider reported that the national anthem, get this, wasn't being played at Colonial Life Stadium in South Carolina when the games were being played. 
Now the report y'all was incorrect and later corrected to say that the anthem was being played. It's just that the team was not present when the anthem was being played. That is fake news. But, but, but get this y'all, the implication was clear. And insinuating that the team, the team and the national coach of the year, um, Coach Staley, was unpatriotic. Which, which is why Coach Staley, y'all, had to take time during the celebration of, of an unprecedented second national title, a, a time, y'all, when a coach, that, that, that in this case a black coach who's never won two national titles, either men's or women's basketball championship, and she had to take the time, y'all, to defend herself and her team to say they were patriotic. She said, y'all, the reason they were not on the field, on the court when the anthem was played was all because of timing. T timing, she said, Brother Stick. The, the, she explained that when the teams leave the court and they go into the locker room after their warm-ups, when they come back from the locker room, that the anthem is being played. She says, we ain't there because we don't want to be there. It's just timing. She said it was timing, not disrespect, but timing, not unpatriotic, but timing, not that the public was prevented from seeing the team on the floor. Or what, what, was it not, not more important that the TV stations were able to show commercials from Budweiser? Or was it more important that the TV stations wanted to show commercials from, from, from DraftKings? Is that patriotic that you got gambling and you got beer being advertised but because a black coach and black players don't come for the national anthem the South Carolina legislature said you are unpatriotic now the article went deeper y'all say deeper it says these same politicians that were trying to get selfish, these same politicians trying to get pictures with the players, these same politicians trying to get a high five from the coach, these same politicians were the same politicians that have passed rhetoric, y'all, of anti-1619 legislation, rhetoric, y'all, of critical race theory, rhetoric, y'all, and bills that reinforce an un how ungrateful black people may be because they are not patriots. These same politicians were passing rhetoric, y'all, that black people have done a grave disservice to our country for not simply going along with the racial myths we've long been fed in our schools, going along with the racial myths of our history book, going along with the racial myths that are chiseled into the statues and the monuments dedicated to men who beat us and raped us and robbed us of our dignity. These same politicians now want to get a selfie. These same politicians now saying you unpatriotic. And y'all, it is clear that Don Staley, y'all, is one of the most patriotic people that you could ever imagine. It's clearly, y'all, that Don, Don Staley, y'all, did not want to embarrass anyone. But here's what Don Staley did, y'all. At the moment when the cameras were on and the microphone was on, Don Staley, y'all, who had just come back at the highest level of competition with not one but two national championships, it is Don Staley, y'all, who is now not only the highest paid women's basketball coach in the country, getting a check from the state of South Carolina, this same Don Staley, y'all, here's what she did. She did not let a God moment to be a turn into a negative situation. Don Staley, y'all, she took the opportunity to educate. Okay, she took the opportunity to elevate. And she took the opportunity simply to say it was timing. T timing, timing, timing. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Not unpatriotic, just timing. Not that I didn't want to love the country, but timing. It, it, it's not that, not that what we did wasn't important and should be applauded, but, but you are pulling up some old stuff that really didn't have anything to do with us winning the championship because of timing. Okay, you, you, you see where I'm going with this. It was Palm Sunday. 
and Jesus was on his way into Jerusalem. It was Palm Sunday. And the Bible says is that as he came into Jerusalem, uh, men and women, boys and girls went to trees and they took or pulled off branches. It was Palm Sunday. And the Bible says that as, as he rode in on a donkey, a beast of burden, it was Palm Sunday. And the Bible says when he entered into Jerusalem, that, that that was when they shouted, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord. It was Palm Sundays. You see, y'all, there are two great Sundays that, that, that come back to back. One being Palm Sunday, which we celebrate today, and the next being Easter Sunday, which is next Sunday. Two of the greatest days in the history of the church, y'all. It was there, this dramatic picture where Jesus' arrival into Jerusalem, the last week of his life, and you got people shouting Hosanna in the highest. It was on this Palm Sunday when he is the King of Kings and the Lord of laws, but, but, but because of timing, say timing, some people wanted to say Jesus rebuked them for their shout now how Jesus keep them quiet because they're making too much noise. Jesus, you need to shut them down because of timing. Uh, they didn't want the attention on Jesus according to the Bible. They wanted it on them because of time. And they, they could not understand how could people come out of the woodworks? How can people come out of the bush harbors? How can people come out of hiding to give high glory praise to God because of timing? It didn't fit their bill, didn't fit their agenda, didn't fit what they wanted to do because of timing. It, the Bible says when Jesus went into Jerusalem, and, and I've got to hang out there just for a little bit because I don't want you to miss the, the, the preset that goes on to the set. Don't miss the pre context but because you've got to look at the pretext. So if you get the pretext and the context, you can understand the content. Let me, let me say it like this. On Palm Sunday, Jesus rides into Jerusalem. And, and Jerusalem is that place where he goes to after giving the parable, shall we say, of the talents. He had talked about Brother L, the five, the two, and the one. It was after that moment with momentum going into Jerusalem. And, and Jerusalem, that North African biblical city, that town of Jerusalem, the place where, 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 where the reign of King David began. Jerusalem, the city that becomes the capital of United Israel. Jerusalem, the location where Solomon built the temple. Jerusalem, the site of the first constructed temple. The Jerusalem, the, the place, the, the climatic end of Jesus' ministry. Jerusalem, where Hezekiah withstands an assault. Jerusalem, where Nebuchadnezzar makes an invasion with the Babylonians. Jerusalem, where Nehemiah rebuilds the walls. Jerusalem, where Ezra initiates religious reform. Jerusalem where Rome appoints Herod the king. Jerusalem where John the Baptist is born. Jerusalem where Jesus of Nazareth is crucified. It's, it's in Jerusalem where Jesus rides in on a donkey and where he cleans out the temple. It's in Jerusalem where he curses the fig tree and where he washes the disciples feet. It's in Jerusalem where he shares the last supper. It's betrayed by Judas. It's denied by Peter. It suffers under Pontius Pilate. It's in in Jerusalem where Jesus is beaten and where he's whipped and where he's constrained and where he's compelled to go on with iron determination. It's in Jerusalem where the people began to shout hallelujahs but because of timing. Because of timing. Because of timing. Because of timing. I understand, my friends, when we when we talk about the tragedy that, that happens in Jerusalem, we got to understand, y'all, that that, that, that that trials come before triumphs. Uh, trials come before triumphs. And, and if the truth be told, I think I'm looking at somebody in the sanctuary, maybe somebody online, you can say, Reverend, not only are you on my street, around my cul-de-sac, but you just rung my doorbell because I'm a living testimony that trials come before 
triumph. I, I've been through some hard trials. I've been through some testing times. I've been through some sleepless nights, but, but I thank God that through the trials, I got some triumphs. I, I've been on up, but I've been down. I've been kicked to the ground, but I thank God that somebody can say that trials come before my triumph. Matter of fact, somebody can say, Reverend, when you think about what I've been through, where I've been with, who I've been with, how I've been hanging out, guess what? I don't look like what I've been through because trials come before my triumph. Somehow, some way, I got a praise on the inside. I got a praise coming out on the outside. I got a praise all around me because my trials gave me my ability to have my triumph. Somebody ought to give God praise right there. You see, you might not be able to stop my praise, but don't get in the middle while my praise is going on. You may be able to keep me quiet. You might say, don't take all of that, but somehow, some way, if you know my trials, you know my dance on my triumph. Now, if you ain't thanking God for your triumph right now, you ought to thank God that the trial didn't keep you down. The trial didn't knock you out. The trial didn't hold you down. Matter of fact, what you've been through, you should have given up a long time ago. But thanks be to God that God is still on the throne. God is still high lifted up. God is still working things out. Won't you help me praise God right there that your trials didn't take you out. Your trials didn't do you in the, But God is still able. Let me, let me, let me tell you why. Well, I know that triumphs come after the trial. Uh, you see, because when you don't let a God moment be turned into a negative situation, God has a way. And God always comes through right on time. You see, that's my challenge to you this Sunday morning, family and friends, that we would not let our trials mess up the triumph that God has given us. Yes, yes, we, we've seen what has happened in the last couple of weeks from the Academy Award, but all I have to say is don't let a God moment turn into a tragic situation. We, we've heard people talk about what happened with, with Judge Jackson. I still say don't let a God moment turn into a tragic. Was, I was hurt by the senator from South Carolina who looks like you and me. And I don't care what you say, I would have had to break rank with my party and say, even though the party might say something, but that woman right there looks like my mama. That woman right there looks like my auntie. That, that woman right there looks like my Sunday school teacher. So I might just have to say, Miss, Miss, Mr. Speaker of the House, Mr. Mon Minority, I got to break rank because that's a trial that's come through a triumph. You see, what we need to understand is it was tragic that where some people were unwilling to praise the Lord Jesus on part. It was tragic. Can you say tragic? And I just give somebody some hope this morning is don't get even focused on the tragedies of life. Because the Bible tells us Jesus rode in on a donkey. The Bible tells us that Jesus came in humble. The Bible tells us that he was not invading a country. Okay, y'all get that. The Bible says he was not trying to take from people what he wanted for himself. He just came in as the promised Messiah. And you see, what's important for us to realize, y'all, is that when we go to a trial in life, there are three things you need to do, three steps to, to face and to take when the devil tries to stop your praise. Number one, you've got to acknowledge, you've got to identify, and you've got to remember. Can you say those words? Say acknowledge, identify, and remember. Come on, say acknowledge, identify, and remember. You see, here's what the Bible tells us when you are facing trials. Acknowledge that for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, 
But Ephesians says, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, against the spiritual forces of the evil in heavenly realms. Understand, my friends, is that you acknowledge that, yes, the devil's trying to steal my joy, but the battle is not mine, it's the Lord's. You got to realize is that once I acknowledge that the devil's trying to stop me from my Palm Sunday praise, the devil trying to confuse me to tell me it don't take all of that. I've got the knowledge. It's not you. It's the spirit inside of you. I got to acknowledge that. Then I got to identify. Say identify. The Bible tells us in John 10, 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. <laughs> Acknowledge it's the devil that's trying to mess you up, but identify that that's what the devil do. Okay, that's bad in English, but you got the minute. Haters hate. And that's what haters do. The devil is here to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. I'm going to acknowledge, I'm going to identify, but, but, but then, 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 then I've got to remember, say remember, remember that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus says, I've come into the world not to condemn the world, but to save the world. Okay, okay. When, when Palm Sunday comes in your life, and that's not just a Sunday before Easter, but anytime you think about the goodness of the Lord, that's time to shout hallelujah. Anytime you remember what God has brought you from, that's the time to shout hallelujah. See if I can explain it. Dr. Monroe, they say Dr. Otis Moss told the story of a young man in South Georgia where he used to pastor that had gone off to seminary and he had spent one year in seminary preparing to be a preacher. He was from a little old country church, country church that didn't meet on every Sunday, but they met the first and third at their church and second and fourth at somebody else's church. Anybody know what I'm talking about? First and third, second and fourth. And so this young man who had spent one year in seminary was invited to come back to speak at the homecoming service, Brother L. And homecoming service meant that everybody from that second and fourth Sunday church was going to be at their church. They met on the first and third. So the church was packed, y'all. The house was full. And this young man with one year of seminary began to prepare his sermon because he's preaching at homecoming. And what he found out, Brother Bailey, is that he wrote everything out line for line, page for page. He had Greek and Hebrew and he had some pig Latin and he had everything in that sermon. It was a major, major piece, y'all. And what so happened in this country church, Miss Nancy, what happens is he got up to the pulpit and it was a country church and you know country church don't have air conditioning. So in the summertime in the country church, what you do, you heist the window. You heist the window and as the window was up, y'all, you know what happened? There was a bumblebee and a wasp begin to fly into the church. They flew in to the church over around the pulpit as they flew over around the pulpit preacher got up he gave all the nice night nice, nice introduction I want to give God thanks for being here thanks to pastor first he went all through the whole line y'all but that bee kept flying around and around and around and all of a sudden that bee land when that bee landed he hit his pulpit like this and all of his manuscript went off the pulpit now, Brother Judge, he's got one year of seminary. He's got all of his sermon on that piece of paper, and now the papers are all on the floor. So he tried to collect the start, Brother David, and all he could say was, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? And y'all, he said, won't he do it? For 22 minutes. Won't he do it? And every time he said, won't he do it? One of the sisters in the church, like Brother Lester, yeah, he will. Won't he do it? Yeah, he will. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. For 22 minutes, all he said was, won't he do it? And the sister in the church said, yeah, he will. For 22, and now, like most country churches, once you finish, you walk down out the pulpit, you shake his hands at the back, and you know, sometimes church folk will throw shade at you without throwing shade at you. 
said one sister went up to him and said, Pastor, you preached hard today. For 22 minutes, you said, won't he do it? I know you done worked hard. Won't you come over to my house and have some chicken? Won't he do it? Another brother came up and he says, Pastor, you been out of that school? And they taught you a couple of good words. And you gave them all your words. Won't he do it? And he was feeling pretty bad about himself. And then he had to seek out that one sister in the church that for 22 minutes of his sermon, all she kept saying was, yes, he will. And he went up to her and he said, sister, I just want to thank you so much for your love. But I just want to ask, why were you responding to a sermon like that? That was probably the worst sermon I probably have ever preached or heard. And she said simply, oh, young man, don't you worry about it. Just because you didn't do your part wasn't going to stop me from doing my part. She said, Reverend, you were supposed to preach the word. My part was going to say, yes, he will. He will do it every time, every place, everywhere, every hour, every minute, every day. He will do it because I know he's done it before and I know he has showed up. Do it again. You see, what happened on Palm Sunday, y'all? was just the beginning of what God was going to do in other folks' lives. The Bible says that the church leaders said to Jesus, won't you keep them quiet? And Jesus says if they don't cry out, the very rocks will cry out. Not only did that happen on Palm Sunday, but look what happened on Palm Monday. On Palm Monday, Jesus went into the temple. When he went into the temple and he saw the money changes there, he saw the commerce exchange going there. The Bible says that Jesus got fireball mad, turned over the tables, and kicked some folk out the house. Because he said that my Bible says that my father's house should be called a house of prayer. And what you're doing in God's house is tragic to what God wants to be done. Jesus not only rebuked the church leaders for trying to keep folk quiet, but he got down on the church leaders for messing up God's house. Now let me push it a little bit farther because it's not just a house, the sanctuary. It's not 1421 Statesville Avenue. It's not the green carpet, the green pews, and the bright lights. Jesus is saying that your body, your spirit, your temple, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And every now and then God has the clean up some stuff in our temples to remind us that we have a call and a charge to keep. Every now and then, God has to remind us that the lives that we live in are not holy lives. And he's got to come in and tear up some stuff and flip over some stuff and break down some stuff. Why? Because it's at that moment, here it is y'all, that we have to realize that God wants to do something even greater in us. Now, 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 the part, Mama Gwen, that really made me shout in the text is that not only does God come to, to, tell, the, to tell the Pharisees, keep, the, keep quiet yourself, let the praisers keep praising, not only does he come, Mr. Teresa, and clean out the temple, but in essence, the Bible tells us that the real tragic moment that the people didn't recognize, it was God's time. There's that time word again. It was God's time. The people thought Jesus would come in on a stealth bomber, on a white stallion, in an Escalade with an entourage. The people thought that Jesus was rolling like that on 20s, y'all, that he would come in packing. The people thought that, oh yeah, we got, we got bro man now, he gonna pull down Herod, gonna pull down this regime, he gonna put the people back in place. That's what the people thought. But God's timing, say God's timing. God's timing has a way of breaking down barriers. God's time has a way of breaking down walls. God's time has a way of letting people say you can't do it, realize that with Christ all things are possible. God's timing is a special kind of time. That's why I got excited when I listened to Judge Katanja Brown Jackson, that new Supreme Court justice. That's why I got excited. She says in essence, it is vitally important that we as black people continue to 
remind this nation from whence we have come. God's timing, the pain that is took to get to be justice, Contanja Brown Jackson could not be understated. Here's just what the judge says, y'all, with that picture on the White House lounge. Put it up, A.V. She's got hands up like this now. And that's no blow it up, A.V. They got to see this. She got hands up now. I know that she had a little Pentecostal in her because she didn't do the Presbyterian thing and cross her arms like this. But else she had a little Holy Ghost in her and she was almost there. She almost had a V. She said, oh! But I, I'm sure, I, I'm sure Brother, Brother Joe, President Joe, took his shades off like this and what she getting ready to do. And I can imagine first, first Vice President said, I know what she getting ready to do. But she just, she just went like, she, Now, I'm watching it on CNN, y'all. I'm getting puffed up and excited because this is what the new judge says. The new judge says, I didn't know what I was going to face, but I knew what I was going to accomplish. You got to get that, y'all. She said, I didn't know I was going to have to face some evil folks, some mean folk, some cantankerous folk. I didn't know I had to go through that, but I knew that God had put a calling on my life, and God had anointed me for this task, and God had prepared me for this moment, and God had taken me through hoop and hoop and hoop and hater and hater and hater, and God says, I don't know what you're going through, sugar baby, but I know what you're going to accomplish. Y'all, that's my shout right there. Oh, Palm Sunday. Don't you ever forget. You might not know what you're going through, but with God on your side, you know what you're going to accomplish. Jesus didn't know what he was going through, but he knew that my Father in heaven would not leave me. My Father in heaven would not forsake me. My Father in heaven would not deny me. Jesus didn't know what he was going to go through, but he knew what he was going to. He was going to a place where he'd be high and lifted up. Wow, what a word, what a message. And I hope and pray that this Palm Sunday sermon was inspirational to you. If it helped you, please call us, email, subscribe. Let us know how we can help your faith journey grow. This is Pastor Cannon. Thank you so much for being a part of the C.N. Jenkins Memorial Presbyterian Church worship. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and all of God's children say together, amen, amen, amen. 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 God bless you. Go in peace.